Hi folks, welcome to Lush One Synth 101. If you've got a Lush One in front of you, you're probably itching to get going and make some noise. But before we do that, I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about what it is and what it does. So this is a Lush One. It's a single board synthesizer and it's in the style of a big modular synth. So all the different elements can be connected together in different configurations and external circuits can be brought into it and it gives you a taste of what a modular synth costing thousands of pounds or dollars would be able to do but at a fraction of the price and the best way I think to start to understand it is to look at a block diagram so here's some high-tech computer graphics this perhaps looks pretty intimidating at first, but we're going to go through it very slowly over the next few modules. Um, but to start off with just a couple of highlights. We have two main elements here. We have the oscillators, which create the basic sounds on the left, and we have an analog filter, which modifies those sounds on the right. And each of these little purple circles are patch points, which you can use to connect uh, the circuits together or to bring external inputs or connect to external outputs. And in order to actually make any useful sound you have to you have to start using these patches because as you can see the two elements as they start off are, are not actually connected. We have a DIN type MIDI input here and though you don't need a MIDI controller to use the Lush one it's really helpful particularly at the beginning and particularly if you have one with a, a pitch bend knob and a modulation knob. Um, in terms of the output then you can take the output of the filter from a patch point but more conveniently we also provide a three and a half mil stereo jack socket which you can plug PC speakers or mixer into though I don't recommend you try it with earbuds or sort of non-active speakers because it doesn't really have the oomph to drive those. So what we're going to do in this module is make just about the simplest connection we can on the Lush One and that is to take the output of oscillator 1 and connect it to the input of the filter and then we're going to connect a keyboard to the MIDI input and some speakers to the 3.5mm jack output. So the patch lead we're going to make goes like this, it comes from OSC1 output and we connect it through to the filter input. So let's look at this on a real Lush One. I've got one here, um, I've already plugged in the power supply and I've connected a DIN lead from the MIDI and a 3.5mm output jack so you can hear the sound. Um, each of these little connectors are 2mm patch sockets which you can use to connect the different modules of the Lush One together in different combinations or bring in external circuits. Um, we have a power switch obviously, uh, we have four switches buttons here which control the mode and LEDs that indicate what mode the system's in and we've got the control knobs, uh, some of these are gain controls associated with an input that's next to them and these two here are master controls for the filter. On the left hand side we've basically got the oscillators and on the right hand side here we've got the filter. So the first thing I want to do is connect the oscillator 1 OSC1 output into the filter input and I'm going to use one of these 2mm uh, patch leads to do that. So there's the OSC1 output and we're going into the filter input. And I've turned all the controls down to minimum except for this control here which is the filter cutoff which I've turned to maximum and we'll switch it on and just play some notes on the keyboard so like this we've got a nice uh, sawtooth wave coming out it's kind of quite boring very computery sound um, one thing you'll notice is this is monophonic and this is kind of characteristic of these analog synthesizers so even if I hold a chord you only hear one note. Um, the pitch control on the keyboard 
does what you would expect. Um, but let's try and get some more interesting sounds out of this. And the first control we're going to use is this, which is the filter cutoff. It's a low pass filter, which means only the low sound components go through. And as I turn this down, which well, is at maximum at the minute, which means basically all the sound comes through. As I turn it down, then we'll start to filter out some of the high frequencies and you'll just hear the lower parts of the sound. So let me hold the note and turn that down and you can hear what it looks like. So what do we hear there? As we kind of go through the middle of the note, uh, it gets softer and rounder sound as we filter out some of the, the high frequencies which make it more edgy. And then eventually it fades to nothing as we filter out all the sounds in the note. And one thing to say is if you set this too low, then you won't hear anything when you play the keyboard uh, because you're filtering out all the sounds. So if you're not getting any sound out of the Lush One, I would always check two things. First of all, that you've made some kind of connection into the input of the filter. Normally you want to do that from OSC One. And also make sure that you haven't turned this master cutoff down too low. So always worth trying to turn that up. Well, the sound you get from just using the cutoff are possibly slightly better than you get without it, but it's still not very exciting. Um, and the be really to get the maximum out of the filter, you need to work two controls. We've used, seen the cutoff already. The other control we want to use here is the resonance. And this is a sort of internal echo inside the filter. And as you turn it up, it adds its own distinctive sound into the note that's being played. And as we'll see, there's an interaction between the cutoff and the resonance because the frequency at which the filter resonates also, also tracks the cutoff. But for now, what we're going to do is we'll set the filter sort of somewhere around the middle. So it's having, having some kind of cutoff effect, but it's not turning the note out completely. And we'll turn the resonance up as we hold a note down. So here's a note. again with the cutoff turned up a little bit higher. So what's going on there? Um, as you turn the resonance up you first of all hear uh, a kind of additional richness coming into the sound as the resonant frequency adds in. And then once you get past a certain point, you start to get a more screaming sound coming on top of it. And that's the filter self-resonating, which means that even if there's no input, um, the filter has so much resonance that it, that it makes the resonant note anyway. Um, and I can show you that by just turning the resonance up without having any note played. So there you hear the self-resonance. We've kind of been through what to do if you can't get any sound out. If you can't shut the lush one up, it probably means you've turned the resonance up too high. So, so always try turning the resonance down. The other thing I can just show you quickly on the self-resonance is the tracking, uh, the relationship between the resonant frequency and the cutoff. So I'll turn the self-resonance up so you hear the note and then um, modify the cutoff and you'll hear it track. So those are kind of some pretty fat kind of uh, electronics going mad sounds. And uh, a lot of the interesting sounds I think come when you're right on the edge of the self resonance. So I'm going to just drop this op keyboard down an octave probably. Uh, just play around a little bit and show you how these two controls might, might be used together.
Well, that gives you a kind of rough idea of some of the sounds you get out from this. The other control that's really useful at this stage is this button here, which controls the wave shape of oscillator one. So as I said before, we start out with a sawtooth wave, but we also have square, sine, triangle, and ramp that we could use. Um, and the ramp and the sawtooth are mirror images and, and won't sound any different to your ear, but they may have some specialist uses if you're bringing in uh, other modules. So I'll just show you, press the button, and we go up to a different wave shape. This is a square wave. Um, that has a kind of more woodwindy, woodwindy type sound than the sawtooth, so let's just try that quickly. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear that's a bit more a bit more like an organ pipe perhaps. Last thing I wanted to show you is at this stage you want to hold a note and be able to play with the uh, cutoff and the resonance controls and just to sort of save you the trouble of having to hold the note what we can also do is there's a gate on the output of oscillator one which turns the oscillator off if there's no note being played. We can override that, that gate by connecting 5 volt, which is this output here, into this connector, which is gate in. And when I do this, the note will be held uh, on the last note played, even if I'm not touching the keyboard. So I'll just plug this in, and you can hear the note starts. note plays all the time. So I'm going to take that off. I mean that you can use that if you don't have a MIDI keyboard as a way of overriding the gate or if you want some kind of external control just put a switch between 5 volts and gate in or drive it from a 5 volt logic line. So I think so far we've really seen the the key features how to connect oscillator 1 into the filter, how to select the wave shape for oscillator 1 and the two filter master controls, which is the cutoff and the resonance. Have a play with these and try and get some really, I think you get some really good sounds even just from, from the, this set of controls. Um, what we're going to talk about next time is how to generate additional effects using the second oscillator and having some kind of automated knob twiddling on the filter to, to enrich the sound that comes out of it.